In this video, I'll share 10 Revit tips that every architect and designer should know. These are lessons I've learned over the years working on architecture projects and refining my workflow in Revit. Whether you're running a small practice or just getting started in a larger firm, these tips will help you work more efficiently and level up your Revit workflow. And if you're new to this channel, my name is Blanca. I'm an educator and principal at Verb. Without further ado, let's dive in. If you're starting a new project and want to reuse standards from previous project that isn't included in the project template, Revit makes it really easy to copy specific settings and types into the new file. To do this, open up the project that contains the standards you want to copy, then go to the new project you want to transfer the settings, and in the Manage tab, click Settings, and select Transfer Project Standards. In the dialog box, you can choose which items to copy over. In my case, I just want to copy the line weights and the line styles. So I'll check None, then select Line Style, and line weights and then hit OK. Now, if I go to additional settings under the Manage tab and click line style, I can see all the line style I created and successfully transfer from the previous project. For every Revit project, I think it's helpful to open the file and immediately see key information and visuals about the project. You can do this by assigning a starting view in your Revit file. You can even set this up in your project template so every new project you start already has a default view assigned. To do this, you need to go to Manage tab under Manage Project and then click Starting View. By default, it's set to the last view but I prefer to set mine to a specific sheet. I've created custom title block for this, so every time I open a project, I can instantly see the renderings in the project information. For residential project, I keep it simple, just the rendering, basic project information, and our logo. Of course, for more complex projects, you can expand this to include the consultant info or any additional data you want to display. You can also change the recent project thumbnail in the Revit to show your starting view. To do that, go to File, Save As, then click Options. Under Thumbnail Preview, select your starting view as the source and then hit Save. Now, when you look at your recent project, you see the customized starting view right into the preview. While working on your projects in Revit, it's incredibly efficient and helpful to generate high-quality renderings for client presentation. Revit now supports a variety of real-time rendering software that can streamline your visualization process. And if you're using Revit 2023 to the most recent version, you'll notice that under the View tab in the Presentation panel, there's a Twin Motion option already included. Twin Motion now comes with the Revit subscription, making it easier to create immersive visual directly from your model. In the past, I've also used Enscape for real-time rendering. And if you're interested in learning how to use Enscape to visualize your Revit projects, check out my other video where I walk through the full workflow. I'll add the link in the description. Lately, we've been using D5 Render for project visualization, and we've recently partnered with them. You can download the D5 Revit Sync plugin. Once it's installed, you'll see a new D5 tab in your Revit. From there, you can launch the D5 render and sync your project to start rendering in real time. And if you'd like to learn more about using D5 render with Revit, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss our upcoming tutorials. You can also use our promo link for a discount for D5 render. What I love about using real-time rendering software in Revit is it updates your rendering every time you make an update to your model. It also comes with a library of pre-made materials and assets you can use directly into your rendering scenes. This makes it so much easier to design and present design updates to your clients. <music> 
When starting a project, I like to use Rhino to create a 3D model during the concept phase. Rhino allows me to model quickly, explore interesting form, and generate multiple design options. Once the concept phase is complete and I need to create drawing, I transfer the model to Revit. To do this, I export my Rhino model as .sat file. To import in Revit, go to Architecture tab, Component, Model in Place, then scroll down and select Mass. Next, to import your Rhino model, go to Insert tab, Insert CAD, and then select the .sat file you exported from Rhino. After importing the mask, go to the 3D view and make sure that you're in shaded for better visual while modeling. To start building from your imported mask, you need to go back to the architecture tab. Now you can use the wall by face and roof by face to generate Revit geometry directly from your Rhino model. This workflow allows you to quickly model and develop your design in Revit, especially useful for more complex forms. For a step-by-step in-depth tutorial on transferring your Rhino model to Revit, check out our previous video. The link is in the description. Having a well-organized Revit project is the key to working efficiently. And it's all start with the project browser. Do you ever notice those pesky question marks in your project browser? To avoid that, I create view types for different purposes. Each view type already has an assign view template specific to that type. To simplify things even further, I name the view and the type and the template the same way. In the project browser organization, I use a customized template that groups view first by family, then by type. This eliminates those question marks and keeps all the view neatly organized. For sheets, I organize them by sheet number using the leading character as a group identifier. As you know, each discipline uses a letter designation, for example, A for architectural sheets. By setting up this organization in your project template, you make it much easier to navigate your project and keep everything consistent. This saves time and removes the guesswork when trying to find specific views, especially if you haven't worked on your project, in a while or collaborating with others. Shout out to Nicholas from BIM Pure where I learned this technique. One modeling hack I found really useful in modeling glass railing is to use walls instead of using the railing tool. This gives you more control over the glass and simplifies modeling. To do this, you need to create a curtain wall where you want the railing. Edit the curtain wall type and set a fixed distance for the glass panels. And to add the handrail, you need to go to railing, sketch path, and then create a new railing type. Uncheck the top rail and under handrail one, add the support at a fixed distance. Position the handrail on the side you want and then that's it, you're done. This method makes it easy to create clean, precise glass railing while keeping control over the dimension and the supports. Line weights are a fundamental concept in architectural drawings. They help create clarity and effectively communicate your design ideas. Lines in architectural drawing establish scale, proportion, and hierarchy. By using specific line weights, we can differentiate elements and emphasize their importance in the design. So for example, a thicker line may indicate a load-bearing walls or major structural elements. Thinner lines may represent non-loading bearing walls or minor details. In general, thicker lines are used to delineate major elements and the planes of the drawing cut while thinner lines represent secondary or minor details. In Revit, elements already have a default line weight assigned to them when drawn in 2D. You can manage and customize this in Manage tab, Additional Setting, where you'll find options for line style, line weights, and line patterns. In Line Weights, you can see how each line will be printed at different drawing scales. 
in line style, you can create new lines and adjust their weight, color, and pattern. For my workflow, I like to name my lines based on their weight, which makes it easier to identify and adjust them in my drawings. If you don't see your line weights in your view, make sure to toggle thin lines in the graphic area of the view tab. By the way, if you're enjoying this video, you might want to check out our new course we're putting together for architects and designer. Most Revit courses focus on BIM and project management, but we're focusing on how architects and designer actually use Revit to design and create drawings. From bringing your concept model from Rhino into Revit, to creating client-ready renderings, to improving your drawing sets. If that sounds like something you'd be interested in, sign up for our waiting list using the link in the description. Now, let's get back to our Revit tips. When you have a repeating element on different levels, you don't need to model them from scratch each time. Instead, you can copy elements and paste them in the same location on other views. For example, select the element you want to repeat and copy it to the clipboard. Then, in the Paste drop-down menu, choose Align to Selected Levels. From there, you can select the levels where you want the elements to appear. And with just a few clicks, your element is now modeled across multiple levels. This is especially useful for tall buildings with similar floor layouts, saving you a lot of time and effort. Being efficient in Revit means taking full advantage of the selection and filter tools. When you left click and drag, dragging left creates a dash rectangle selecting all the elements that the line touches. Dragging right creates a solid rectangle selecting all the elements fully enclosed in the area. Once the elements are selected, you can use the filter button to exclude elements that you don't want. You can also save selection that you use frequently. In the lower right of the Revit UI, I like to disable select pin elements so I don't accidentally move important items. For example, I always pin all my grids and disable their selection to prevent accidentally modifying them. Another setting I like to adjust is the double-click action for families. By default, double-clicking a family opens the family editor. To disable this, you need to go to Option, User Interface, Customize under Double-click option. For Element Type, Family, set the double-click action to do nothing. Now, when you double-click a family, it won't automatically open the family editor helping you avoid interruptions while modeling. For your final tip, let's look at the new feature in Revit 2026. Previously, aligning views across multiple sheets means relying on grids, reference planes, or other tedious workaround. Now, you can save view position and reuse them easily. To do this, what you need to do is place your view on the sheet. In the ribbon, choose a view anchor, usually the view origin. Click save position, give it a name, and the position is now locked into that sheet. When placing another view, like the next floor level, on a different sheet, simply apply the same position and your view will be perfectly aligned. You can also adjust the state position in the instant properties under view to sheet positioning. To manage all state position, you need to go to modify tab, manage position, where you can see how many views are using each state position or delete them if needed. And that's a wrap on the top 10 Revit tips for architects and designers. If you find this video helpful, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe for more tutorials, tips, and contents on architecture and design. If you have any question or want a deeper dive into any of these tips, leave a comment below. Also, be sure to follow us on all our socials for updates and more architecture content. You'll find all the links in the description. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.